What's going on guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm bringing you yet another season preview. Now that the transfer window is finally over, we know who's going to be in every single team. We've done the Chelsea Lone Army season preview, which I can admit, I'll hold my hands up, that was way too long. But there's a lot of players, there's not really much I can do about that to be honest. But today we've got a much more concise video, a Chelsea youth season preview preview so today i'm be talking you through the players that you should really keep an eye out for this season obviously tuchel has gone now very sad to see but we have to move on and graham potter is that new man a player a manager actually that is known for bringing through youth players it's not always youth players but he's known for his development now brighton often bring through under 23 players and really develop them into first team players so this video is probably more important than ever to know who the breakthrough stars are in the academy who you'll see training with the first team throughout the season and who could actually be getting minutes under Graham Potter. And just before we get into the video, please make sure to like the video. I'm going to set a light target this time. I'm going to go slightly higher than the 100 that I sent last time. It's going to be 105 likes. I know, absolutely crazy. Gone for a huge increase there. But honestly, it would absolutely make my day and it takes you one click to get me towards that goal. So please make sure that happens. And also, once you watch the video, once I've given you the information on all these players, let me know in the comments who you think is going to break through. Now let's get into the video. But very briefly, before we get into the players that you could be seeing making an impact possibly in the first team, we're going to go through the players in the under-18s who really are the rising stars, the players that you're going to start hearing about as proper wonder kids. We're going to start from the back, and that's Ted Curd, such a talented goalkeeper, brilliant with the ball at his feet, a brilliant shot stopper, was playing for the under-18s at 14 years old due to a goalkeeping injury crisis, but literally looked like he was there for years. A very, very talented goalkeeper. The common production line for goalkeepers right now is out of this world. The next Next up is Michael Golding, an excellent midfielder, fits the profile of your Loftus-Cheek or Tino Andrin where he just dribbles past players with absolute ease, has an eye for goal and this is a player you're going to be hearing about a lot I'm sure in the future, hopefully bridges that gap into the under 21s this season which would be a brilliant first step. Next up we've got Atto Amper, a hybrid wing back winger, I think started off naturally as a winger but has moved into wing back as we formed a new formation, he usually plays off the left but it can do both sides very well, he's already started off brilliantly under the 18s this season, he bagged a goal in in their last game and he's looking like a really really quality player so fast so skillful next up we've got Donnell McNeely he's a striker he got 48 goals and assists for the under 16s last season and now he's playing for the under 18s as a striker I mean 48 goals and assists that is absolutely insane and hopefully he carries that over and the last one I'm going to talk about is Shamara Moheka a player that I've already talked about a new signing from Brighton probably too young right now for you to be hearing about him yet but he's such a talented striker we've already seen some videos of him scoring absolute bangers for Chelsea in a preseason tournament hopefully he carries that through and continues to improve and becomes a big player for Chelsea in the future so now we're finally going to get on to the players that I think could possibly make an impact into Chelsea first team relatively soon. Maybe it's just a low move next season. Maybe it's a low move in January, but these players have really high potential. Again, we're going to build from the back and it's the player that I think is one of the most underrated players in the academy and that is Bashir Humphreys. He's naturally a left centre back, but can also play central centre back. And what really hit me, I've seen this guy perform really well over the over the years. I've seen him in the academy, but the moment that taught me that he was such a good player was not when I saw him pinging balls from across the pitch on his left foot and right foot. He has absolutely no weak foot. He can do it on both feet, just like Kula Bali. But it was actually when I went to Cobham for Chelsea Tottenham in the last game of last season, when we had to avoid relegation in a huge game that Chelsea could not lose, and we managed to win in the last minute. We had Trevor Chalaber, Malang Sarr, and Basher Humphreys in the back through that game. Basher Humphreys had the captain's armband that game, and he was the one bossing everyone around. This game really did it for me. It proved to me how important this guy was, how much of a leader he was, that he had two first team players, one international for France under 21s, I believe. He plays in League One and Trevor Chalaber, who is making his debut season for Chelsea and performing at an exceptional level at times, he was telling them what to do. He wasn't scared at all to impose himself and he knew what it had to take. Honestly, this guy's a really talented centre back. I'm not saying he's going to make it through. I'm not saying he's the next John Terry. I'm just saying he does have a lot of talent in him and I really would wonder if he could make that gap, especially with this formation that Potter seems to be using in a like a 1-2 
uh, formation in the three uh, center backs. He has a deeper center back in the base. And then the two right center back and left center backs really do stretch wide. And that left center back that stretches wide is allowed to drive into midfield and put the ball to the wingers on the opposite side of the pitch. Fits Basher Humphreys to an absolute T. As well as the deeper center back position. Because I said he has a huge passing range which fits him at both left center back and central center back. Now I have heard whispers that he could go on loan in January. Maybe as a swap deal for Ronnie Edwards. So Ronnie Edwards, the centre-back from Peterborough, a very talented centre-back again who loves to break the lines. I've heard that we could go back in for him in January and offer Basher Humphreys to them on loan for the second half of the season, which would again be a great solution because I know he wanted to go on loan this summer, but unfortunately nothing materialised and Chelsea couldn't afford to let so much quality go in the academy. But this is really a player you should keep your eye on. Very underrated, never talked about, but a quality player nonetheless. Now the next person we're going to get into is Dion Rankin. Again, I've said it before and I'll say it again. This guy, 19 years old, which actually is relatively older than the academy. It's not old, but he's turning 20 this season. He's a senior player in the academy. He's been around for a couple of years in the under-21s. He's a right wing back. He's actually played left wing a decent amount this season. He's shown his versatility. And a lot of you will have seen some of his highlights where he literally just gets the ball, knocks it past the player and chases it. The speed on this guy is immense, but he's also got technical ability. He can create, he can shoot, he can do it all. Maybe defensively, he's sometimes slightly unaware, but he is very, very lively. And the reason I bring him up is not just because of his quality, but actually, I feel like he fits a very similar mould to Tarek Lamptey, the way that they play. And obviously, we all know how good Tarek Lamptey was under Graham Potter. Now, under no naivety that Dion Rankin is not going to be coming in here over Rhys James. We all know Rhys James is the absolute man. But in terms of a few cup appearances, I wouldn't be surprised if Graham Potter saw Dion Rankin balling for the under-21s and thought, give me some of that in the first team. I need that liveliness. I need that injection of pace. And he really is a top quality player. The next player we're going to talk about is a new signing, Cesare Casade. I've talked about him in other videos but this guy's come from Inter Milan and when you watch his highlights there's one thing you see this guy loves to attack the box loves to score goals as a midfielder does that remind you of anyone I'm not going to say the name because I don't want to make any comparisons but you know who I was thinking of when you talk about midfielders who like to arrive in the box he's played two games for Chelsea so far he did pick up a red card in his first game but by all accounts of people that watched that game he was very very good put himself about with loads of tackles really aggressive very good technical ability as well a great road runner and also loved to get in and around the box and that showed in his second game his debut in the Premier League 2 where he scored an assist from Amari Hutchinson another player we're going to talk about later in the video so we've already seen his arriving in the box speciality being put to use scoring goals and you know obviously Graham Potter he's very flexible systems he every single player he has his own kind of vision for how they should play and it changes about three to four times a game to be honest which would be hard to keep up with but that just is how he does it so I can't say I have an absolute specific role for him obviously you have these players like Pascal Gross McAllister who have all been very proficient in front of goal for Graham Potter at separate times so I hope so Casade could easily fill any of those roles but he really does look like a physical specimen loves to put about loves to get in the box and is a player that definitely you could be seeing bridging that gap because we didn't spend 20 mil on him for nothing next player we're going to get into is a player that you guys may have actually heard about because he's already bridged that gap only one time but he did look really good and that is obviously mr lewis Hall. Now this guy is one of the biggest academy talents to be honest that I've seen in my time of watching the Chelsea Academy. He really has it all. The way he drives through midfields with absolute ease is honestly incredible. It's like they're not there. He has also very good goal scoring ability. He manages to get in and around the box and has a great finish on him. He's also very good defensively. He is your definition of a box to box midfielder. Creative, goal scoring, puts about, stamina, tackles honestly he has it all now there's a big misconception in the Chelsea fan base for those that don't watch the academy the Lewis Hall is this left wing back left center back kind of guy not at all he is a midfielder versatility is actually what hurts him quite a lot of the time because managers see just how useful he is in other positions and that he's always going to help the team in any position so they just throw him in wherever they can fit him in but he really is a midfielder he's a pure center mid a box to box can fill in as a six can fill in as a ten but you want him as that eight or in a double pivot. Now, I do think that he can actually be quite useful in this Potter system. The way I've been seeing his teams fit, uh, line up right now, I'll try and put a screenshot. You see that number 10 in McAllister, who you would have thought in these average heat map positions that I'm showing you right now, that he'd be closer to the box. But actually, he's one of the deeper midfielders. And I can see Lewis Hall fitting this position quite a lot. It, obviously, it's similar to the role Kovacic would be playing. I'm not saying Lewis Hall will play every single game, but just as a mold for the future, I think he could come in 
deep, pick up the ball, progress the ball with his expansive passing, with his dribbling, and then get in and around the box. Equally, he can play this Pascal Gross kind of uh, position, and even he could play as a wing back because his wing backs are quite inverted. They can play out wide, they can play inverted. It's a really flexible system, and it's going to suit the versatile players in this squad. So honestly, I put out a tweet yesterday about Lewis Hall, and I really want you guys to remember the name. This guy could seriously, seriously be a Chelsea for player, especially under Graham Potter. Next up, we've got a player that we managed to poach from Arsenal, an incredible signing. When I heard about this, I was so happy. That is Amari Hutchinson, a naturally left-footed player coming in off the right-hand side, but can also adopt central positions. He is such a creative force, but equally has that attacking output, loves to go on goal. He's got a number of beauties against Chelsea and against many other teams, but I just remember the ones against Chelsea thinking, why have Arsenal got this gem? And we managed to get him. Now, he did want to go on loan in the summer to Reading, but unfortunately, they didn't quite materialise, and then it was too late for another low move to come about so he is going to be in the PL2 this season and to be honest he's way too good for the PL2 it is a bit of a waste and for me I know we have Carney Chukmeka in first team training because obviously we did pay big money for him and he is a huge talent but I honestly think Amari Hutchinson should also be in first team training right now now I'm not surprised he may not get the game time with the first team yet as I said obviously the reason why I'm talking about him is because I think it might be in the future but I do think he is on that level similar to Chukmeka and similar to the rest of the first team especially considering the lack of creativity that we have in this team that he should be involved in first team training he was making squads regularly at arsenal and obviously we are levels above arsenal at least i'd like to think but he should be involved in first team training this guy's already been incredible for the pl2 when you watch the highlights of games that aren't televised all the commentators are talking about is how lively how creative how good amari hutchinson is so he really is a name to remember he's gonna have a bright bright future and hopefully be able to bridge that gap into first team training and some minutes under graham potter and again if we look into that average player position map you see a lot of these players in these half spaces not quite wide not quite central in these inverted half space positions and that fits Amari Hutchinson to a tee he can pick up the ball from the chalk on the sideline but he can also pick it up in the center and go towards goal and create so he really is a player that you guys should be looking out for the future hopefully he gets some first team involvement this season Carney Chukmeka the reason I want to bring him up is just again because I feel like he could fit that mold that Graham Potter wants to use we see how proficient Pascal Gross is in front of goal just before Graham Potter left. He was almost filling that Gundogan role that we saw at Man City where a midfielder really gets a lot of goals and it's not by chance, it's not by luck. It's just the manager playing him in a very clever position and I think Carney Chukmeka can fit that role as that eight, almost 10 hybrid, but you want him as an eight so he can pick up the ball slightly deeper. Again, he lurks to pick it up in the half spaces. He can pick it up back to goal. He can pick it up going forwards. He can breeze past defenders. He has an eye for goal. He has an eye for creativity. He has both feet. He has it all. But the important thing is with Carney Chukameka, he does really need a chance. Aston Villa were happy to play him in many Premier League games. The only reason he stopped playing was because he didn't want to sign his contract. I know there's this whole thing about overplaying the youth players. We don't want to put uh, 11 full of common players. I'm not asking for that. But honestly, this guy is special. There's a reason he won the England and 19 players of the tournament. He is so good. Every single club in the world wanted him when they found out he was free from Aston Villa. And we need to trust him to give him minutes. He will add a spark to our midfield. And I back this guy to be getting regular or semi-regular first team minutes by the end of the season trust me he's a top top talent now we get into a man who we finally found out from the Chelsea spot about a week ago that apparently Charlie Webster is very close to signing a contract extension at Chelsea, which is such good news. As many know, I've dubbed him the Cobham Kovacic many, many times. He stayed around in the academy this season to be that guy in the academy, to be the main guy. He's got that silk about him. I'll try and put a clip here from the under-18 PL Cup again. I don't know if I'll be able to find it, where he just dinks the ball above a player and breezes past him. That's his game. He makes players disappear. Again, he's got the offensive side of his game he's got the pressing side of his game he's got even got the offensive side of his game once again a pure box-to-box -box midfielder and one you know a lot of these play uh, these fans that don't like the academy they talk about the technical ability in the academy you definitely can't question the technical ability on Charlie Webster once he signs his new contract obviously you want to see him playing in the academy getting minutes becoming that main guy because last season he did have a few inconsistencies in the first half of the season he really built himself in the second half of the season becoming a really important player so this season you want to see 
see him be that main guy in the under 21s but equally that doesn't mean he can't bridge the gap he did join a lot of first team training sessions last season under Thomas Tuchel talked about how he uh, how he was actually influenced by Kovacic saw him as a bit of an idol so that is definitely something that needs to continue this season and hopefully translate into minutes because last season Ross Barkley got minutes over him against Chesterfield and that still pains me to this day it was an absolutely unnecessary decision to be honest and this guy is going to be such a big player for Chelsea in the future if we manage to use him correctly another eight that could fit Graham Potter's system so there you go I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you got insight on all the youth players in Chelsea right now and who could be making a difference for Chelsea whether that's in the very far future in two to three years or even sooner then you think there's a lot of talent at Cobham and Graham Potter is a manager that is huge on youth integration. So once again, make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification and comment who you think is gonna be the top star out of these players that I mentioned in this video. See you next time.